How's it going guys? So in the Bay Area right now, it's windy and rainy. There's no flying on Sunday, but I realized one must never stop the RC. So I came to Maui. Tonight there's a luau, tomorrow there's whoop. This is the Waialea part of Maui, and right along the beach here, where all the hotels and resorts are, it's like a tiny little paradise. There's just a lot of palm trees, a lot of places to fly, and you could not fly a 5-inch quad here on 4S or 6S. It'd be too loud, too obnoxious, but a tiny whoop that no one can really see or hear, it's just about perfect. I've been flying right here and on the beach quite a bit <laughs> every morning pretty much without any problems it's our last day and finally it happened my quad is in a palm tree so now I need to get some help how embarrassing if anybody's wondering this is the Andaz resort in Maui it's a really nice place they got a bunch of swimming pools and you can get drinks and stuff and um, pancakes so, you know, it's a pretty nice place. Uh, the beach is really nice, and uh, I would recommend it for tiny whooping. Um, just don't put your quad in a palm tree, because then you have to ask for help, unless you have a ball, which I don't have. So, I'm not gonna throw the radio at it. Okay, now the mobula is beeping in the tree. That's great. It's just hanging them that, see? You see right there? It just needs to be knocked. <laughs> we just knock it, it'll come down. Help has arrived. It's pretty snagged in there. It's kind of just wrapped around that little leaf. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right, tree adventure is over. Is that Rob? Hey Rob. No, too tall. All right, a minute ago, a couple of people walked by while I was flying this Mobula, and one said to the other, oh, he's flying a drone. 
but I don't think they knew where it was or they saw it. Even though it was only about 30 feet away, um, just with the noise of the ocean and the background noise, you can't really hear it. And unless you know where it is, you can't really see it too well. So then I flew by and they saw it and they said, well, if you're going to fly a drone, that's the way to do it. And that's really how I feel about these. You know, you can't fly a five inch freestyle quad here. It would be totally inappropriate and it wouldn't go over well. But this thing you can fly all day. Nobody sees it or hears it really. I've been flying, um, you know, by the hotel here a lot. I've been flying on the beach all over the place and no one said a word other than a few people have come up and said, wow, that's pretty cool. What are you flying? And they wanted to see it. But for the most part, no one really knows it's even there. Uh, so that's what, you know, that's what makes these things so good. Now, I did bring two quads to Hawaii. I brought the Indutrix BL and I brought this Mobula 7 DSMX version. The Indutrix BL is back in the room. And why is that? Because this thing flies so much better. This thing is like a five inch tuned quad. Uh, you can do a lot more with it. It just flies so much better. It's not real fair to compare them. This is a two cell quad. The Indutrix is a single cell quad. But this thing has, you know, it has the punch, it has the control, and it just flies like a bigger quad. I have a lot of confidence flying this out over the ocean. Whereas in Dutrix BL, I don't feel any confidence flying it over the ocean because I never know when it's going to hiccup, go into its weird thing where it just loses altitude and maybe crashes. So a lot more confidence with flying this one. Now this one does take a little more to set up if you're a Spectrum guy and you don't want to deal with beta flight, you just want to bind and go. And Dutrix BL is going to give you that. But this one, you know, just enter a bind command in the command line on beta flight, bind it, and then you should be good. Although that's not quite true because... I did that and I still couldn't get the thing to arm and a couple things were wrong. One, the throttle endpoints were too high, I had to reset those, still wouldn't arm so I asked the guy who knows a lot about this stuff and that's OB Rob, Quad Rob, and he gave me a bunch of suggestions and said one of them was uh, turn off turtle mode. So I did that and then it would arm. So go figure, there are some little quirks with it. Um, you might have to deal with in beta flight to get this thing to work, but once you have that going, you won't go back to the Indutrix BL after flying this one. There's just no question. Flight time's a little lower on this one. If you're punching it a bunch, you're gonna get about two minutes. If you control your punches and limit them to one or two per flight and just kind of cruise around more, you can push it to about three minutes, but a little bit less flight time, but well worth it. So on this trip, I brought those two quads. I'm mainly flying the Mobula 7, IX-12 radio, Fat Shark HDO goggles. I have my main battery pack here, that little charging board right there for the single cell packs. And that's the whole thing. So I've been flying here last four or five days every morning uh, by the hotel and on the beach. It's been a blast. Maui's great. If you're going to come someplace like this, definitely recommend bringing a whoop along. That close-up of the sea turtle, I was not snorkeling. I wasn't chasing it. That was actually taken from a outrigger boat that just happened to drift right up to it and then the turtle swam under it. So uh, don't chase the sea life or the sea life might, you know, bite you back. You know, I just want to say on our last evening here, last sunset, I saw one of the most, I think, incredible things I've seen in my life. I mean, you know, most of your life you're just kind of living it day to day and, and you just see the same stuff over and over again. But we we're watching the sunset and a couple of humpback whales started kind of playing right in front of the sunset and they started to breach, which means they, you know, jump almost completely out of the water and they slam back into it. Uh, They're probably about a mile or so away uh, and the GoPro doesn't really capture it, but you know, you could see them real clear just jumping out of the water and slamming into it. They were slapping their fins on the water and they're doing it over and over again. They probably breached like 10 or 15 times right in front of the sunset. If you had, you know, a high power telephoto camera, you probably could have got a National Geographic type picture with the whales breaching in front of the sunset. It was just that amazing. Um, but the GoPro, I, I was filming it and, I, and you can see them breaching on it. Uh, you know, down here in Maui, they come to breed. Um, so they don't, they don't breach and do that stuff too often as much as they do in Alaska uh, because they're basically starving down here. They need to conserve their energy. They're not eating. Um, they're just down here to breed and have their babies and then go back up to Alaska. So you don't see that, you don't usually see that too much. Uh, I guess it's a form of communication. It's a way of saying we're here or maybe they just do it because they like it. Um, but uh, they were just doing it over and over again and it was pretty incredible. A lot of people were on the beach watching that and just enjoying the show. So you come to Maui, you never know what you're going to see. Um, there's always just amazing things. Uh, it's just a beautiful place. Um, even that much better when you got some tiny whoops to fly around. So I just wanted to mention that because uh, it's not something you see every day. And it was definitely pretty cool.
English is just beautiful. Thank you guys for joining me. Mahalo for a quick video on some tiny whooping in Maui. It's been a lot of fun, but it's the last sunset. Time for me to get back home. I'll see you guys back in California. And uh, remember, never stop the RC. All right, guys. Aloha.